Monica Pearson's vision was inspirational. She turned around the idea of care for the dying into care for the living. She made sure that the symptoms of people living with incurable illness were properly managed so that people could have a better quality of life. She also wanted families to be better supported. And more than that, she wanted education of health and social care professionals so that more people could deliver this type of care. It started with a vision to enable anyone with a life-limiting illness to live their life to the full. Forty years ago, Monica Pierce, a former NHS matron, decided to open the Midlands' very first hospice. It took a lot of hard work, but in March 1979, Monica's ambition was finally realised and St Mary's Hospice cared for its first ever patient. In 1983, just four years after we opened, we had 100 volunteers supporting our charity. Today, we have nearly 400 people giving up their time for free to volunteer in lots of different roles. So valued are our volunteers that 11 years ago, over 380 of them received the Queen's Award for Excellence, the highest award given to volunteers across the UK. As well as our volunteers, we've also had support from much-loved celebrities over the years. In 1984, Princess Diana visited the hospice, creating lots of royal memories for patients, staff and volunteers. Fast forward to 2018, and former Baggies player Brendan Batson and media broadcaster Luella Bailey became patrons of our charity, having both experienced our care and support. In 1985, Monica recognised that different patients had different care needs, and so she extended our services by opening the day centre and teaching unit. Today, our day centre is known as our day hospice and its therapeutic programme helps people to focus on living well with their illness. Our teaching unit has also evolved and we now have an expert team who champion education and research. We regularly partner with local universities and in 1994, we joined forces with the then University of Central England and St Richard's Hospice to launch a dedicated palliative care degree, the first of its kind in the West Midlands. As well as extending our services, the hospice was also keen to extend our presence in the local community. So by 1989, we had launched two shops, one in Selly Park and one in Rubri. Three decades later, and we now have 17 shops across Birmingham, Sandwell and Solihull, helping to raise vital awareness of our care and funds. In 1998, the hospice hosted its first Light Up A Life celebration, one of our most popular festive events. Every December, hundreds of people visit the hospice to dedicate a Christmas tree light to a loved one, and in 2018, the appeal raised over £60,000. Since we opened, our nurses have visited people in the comfort of their own homes. But in 2016, we expanded our care into community locations with the launch of our first satellite clinic. Today, the majority of the people we care for are supported either at home or in the community. We also have a dedicated family and carer support team who provide a wide range of emotional, practical and spiritual care to adults and children. Our hospice wouldn't be where it is today without the generous support of local people like you. Whether you take part in an event, fundraise with friends and family, or become one of our corporate partners, together you help us raise the money needed every year to run our crucial services. Before we visited Birmingham St Mary's Hospice, I had no idea what to expect from a hospice. I genuinely thought it was a place where end of life occurred, that somebody would go in to spend their final moments and, and they, would, they would die at St Mary's. Um, that, that's what I genuinely believed. As soon as we walked through the doors of St Mary's, I was completely educated. Um, even just seeing the waiting area, the canteen, the various different rooms for patients, the outdoor facilities, the entertainment. 
it was uh, it was incredible and then as we continue to work with St Mary's we can really understand the different benefits and services that they offer um, not just to the patient but that's extended to, to the patient's family also. I work with a team of healthcare assistants and trained nurses in order to provide um, support for those people who have life limiting conditions at home. The sort of activities and support we can offer patients from the Hospice at Home team is very much around personal care and emotional support, um, especially emotional support not only for the patient but also for their, their families and carers as well. Initially when we meet these people they're probably going through a crisis point where perhaps a loved one has deteriorated so significantly um, but they don't want an admission to hospital so we can work together with the district nurses and other healthcare professionals to ensure that that person is cared for in their own home and feels well supported. The care stands out at Birmingham St Mary's Hospice every time we visit. My mum will come back and say that she's enjoyed um, various aspects. When I visited with my children, we felt very welcome. It's like walking into a family rather than walking into a hospital, which um, there's a massive difference. Um, and I, I wasn't aware of that until we became involved with Birmingham St Mary's. I'm very proud to work for Birmingham St Mary's Hospice for so many different reasons. I think that positive feedback makes me feel very proud that I'm participating in delivering that care and leading the teams that, that help to do that. Um, but I'm also really proud to be part of that big hospice team, that big hospice family. Um, we have a great cohort of staff and volunteers who really understand um, the values and the mission of the hospice. So we have shared goals and we strive towards them together. Um, the, the nurses are really kind and friendly and also and like even if they didn't know you they would like ask you questions and they would talk, speak to you and like if you wanted a drink and, and you, you already finished another one you just like they'd say help yourself and stuff and yeah they're really kind and, and they're really they really good to talk with. Hospice care is um, so vital for so many different reasons and I could sit here and bore you going through all of those reasons than things that I think but actually it's much more important to hear about what those who have used our services think um, was so vital to them and actually we're really lucky that we get lots of brilliant feedback um, from the people that use our services and their stories are really strong and powerful um, and they will tell you how vital hospice care has been to them. My dad was amazing. He was such a brilliant dad. He was just the best. So my dad was diagnosed with bowel cancer. Um, he was given two to five years to live. Um, unfortunately for us, we didn't know at the time, but we weren't gonna get two to five years. We actually got about nine months with him from that diagnosis. To be cared for at home, was really, really important to my dad. It's what he wanted and more than anything. We were in the intensive care unit when he'd been told he'd got days to live and he said, get me home. And as soon as they said we're going home, he was so happy. I hadn't seen him smile for days, but his face lit up when he said he was going home. It was so important to him. The Hospice at Home team were brilliant. They came in after my dad had um, spent a while in the intensive care unit. Um, they came in and they were just really friendly. They were really nice, they were like a breath of fresh air because they came in and spoke to my dad. They came in and had a chat with him about things that he like wanted to talk about and that he could relate to even though they were doing what they had to do to help my dad it was it wasn't like a hospital setting at all then if the hospice can support me and my family in such a short amount of time imagine what they can do with another 40 years i think it's brilliant if they carry on the work that they're doing for another 40 years
future for Birmingham St Mary's Hospice um, uh, I think is a bright future. There is no doubt that unlike lots of organisations at the moment, you know, there are some uncertainties around what the future holds, but the key thing for me is that the people of Birmingham value Birmingham St Mary's and what we do for them, and whilst that continues, that is our biggest strength. Birmingham St Mary's Hospice will be facing a lot of challenges over the next 40 years and we have to prepare for them now. It's a celebration that more of us are living longer, however, more of us will be doing so with a lot more conditions and those are the conditions that hospice care can really help with supporting a better quality of life. So the demand for hospice care is growing. We educated 1,700 health and social care professionals last year and we're working and learning with communities so that our care is responsive and right for all the cultures, ethnic backgrounds, way of life of all the people in the area that we serve. I am so proud of all our staff and volunteers. Without everybody's efforts, we wouldn't be where we are today. And the most special thing about our staff and volunteers is they want to keep learning and want to keep improving and making a difference to people's lives. We did a recent staff survey um, where actually 99% of people working for the organisation said that they fully understood the values and mission of the organisation. That's incredible. It means we've got a shared common goal and that's about delivering and supporting people to deliver exemplary care. The most important people in our whole story are our patients and families and that some of those families become our most fervent supporters. The people I would really like to thank from the past, the present and the future are all those past supporters, staff and volunteers, those that are working with us now and those that might be thinking of supporting us going forward into the future. Without the people to support our work, we wouldn't be here where we are today and we wouldn't be able to prepare well for the next 40 years.